Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. So in this video, we are going to look into one of the important topic inside Spring Framework. So we are going to look into how to customize the nature of Spring Bean inside the lifecycle. Basically, there are various ways by using which we can achieve that. We are also going to look into how the Bean lifecycle actually looks. So this is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So let's first go through the agenda of this particular video. So customizing the nature of Bean in lifecycle. Right. So this is what we are going to cover as a part of this particular video. So first we are going to see what is customizing. What do we mean by customizing the nature of bean, right? You might be hearing this term first time, right? What are custom actions while creating or destroying the beans? That is something we are going to look into first. After that, we are going to look into the interfaces to customize the bean nature. In order to achieve that, we can use this couple of interfaces, right? So those interfaces quickly we are going to go through. After that, there is another way we can achieve this by using post construct and pre destroy annotations. So these are again important annotation inside spring. So those also we are going to cover as a part of this particular video. And we are also going to have the glances of bean lifecycle in this particular video. So before looking into this, let's look into this particular diagram over here. So this is a diagram that we saw in the last video. While understanding what is beans and application context, we have seen this particular diagram over here. A business object or a POJO will be converted to your spring bean by using this configuration metadata, right? And those will be available inside your spring container, right? And after that, once those beans are created, then they will be ready to use, right? Now the beans will be created over here in this chunk, right? It will be created and added inside your application context or spring IOC container, right? Now let's say just after creating that particular bean, I want to perform certain action. It can be any action, for example, initializing any connection or initializing any DB connection. So those initialization aspect I want to perform right after creating the bean and before the bean is ready to use. Other thing I want to do, let's say when we stop our application, the beans that are created over here will be destroyed, right? So before destroying the bean, let's say I want to clear some memory. That means I want to perform certain task before destroying the bean, right? So these are custom actions that we want to perform after creation of bean or before destruction of bean, right? That is what we call as custom actions while bean creation or destruction or customizing the nature of bean in life cycle. Customizing the nature. That means, that means after creating the bean, we are initializing something. That means we are customizing the nature of bean or before destroying, we are releasing some connections or performing some tasks that we want to perform. That is again, customizing the nature of bean, right? So that is what we are going to look into. And how we are going to do that? We are going to do that by using these methods. Okay. So when we customize the nature of the bean, that will let us, that will let that particular bean perform certain actions upon initialization and destruction of that particular bean, right? Perform certain action after the bean creation or perform action before destroying that particular bean, right? So that is something which we can achieve by using this, right? So there are many things that you can do by using these actions over here and they are widely used. So it is important to understand this and there will be a lot of interview questions on these particular annotations as well that we are going to cover in this video. And in order to understand what exactly these annotations do, we need to first go with the traditional approach that is by using interfaces. Don't worry if you are not understanding what is this interface and these annotations. Now we are going to actually look into examples and we are going to understand that, right? Now this particular diagram we have seen in the last video, right? Now let's enhance this particular diagram to see how the bean life cycle will look, right? So let's modify it like this. There we go. I hope you can see it. So here we have same uh, POJO classes which we apply inside our application and we will have some configuration metadata, for example, annotations. For example, we have service annotation, we have component annotation, we have rest controller annotation, right? All of those annotation will create a bean basically. So what will happen in the traditional way so first, when we start our application, your Spring IOC container will be started, right? After that, once the container is up, the bean creation will be started. So it will find which packages to scan and it will start creating bean. So how it will find which packages to scan? By using at the rate component scan annotation that we have seen in the last video, right? Now while doing bean creation, there will be multiple dependencies. So let's say one class A is dependent on class B, then that dependency will be injected, right? So your IOC container will be started, bean will be created and dependency will be injected, right? 
After that, your bean will be ready to used and will be used inside your application. Now let's say I'm stopping my application. At that point, the bean will be destroyed. And after that, the application will stop. So that is the typical life cycle of the bean, right? Those are all the stages by which your bean will go through, right? Now, in order to understand that in the more detail, let's go through this example. For example, here we have a same application that we have been using for last couple of videos. So it's a e-com project, e-commerce project that we are checking, which have ample amount of classes by now. So here we have a main application class. And here in the service, we have multiple services. So let's say we have this product service. So we are only going to focus on this particular service as this class will create a spring bean. And after that, we will customize this particular bean according to the actions that we want to perform, right? In it and destroy. So that, that is something which we are going to see. Now, when I start the application, the container will be started, right? The spring container will be started. Then your application will scan for components. Then it will come to this service and it will find that, okay, on this particular service, we have this service annotations. That means this particular POJO, this particular POJO that is coming, which is product service in this case, should be converted to Spring Bean, right? Because it is annotated with at the rate service annotation. Now it will start creating the bean. So it will create the bean. It will create the bean by using this particular constructor. But now it will find that, okay, there is one dependency for this particular bean, which is product repository, right? Then it will inject that particular dependency inside your product service so here we are using constructor injection basically so dependency injection is something that i have already covered as a part of dependency injection video so you can go ahead and check that so once this dependency is injected this particular bean will be created and it will be ready for use right so now if i run this application let's see what happens so i'll say stop and rerun and let's see so here as you can see product service created that means this particular statement is being printed while initializing this particular bean. Now this particular bean is present inside our application, right? Now in order to check the beans inside our application, we can go to this actuator slash beans. So that is a feature of your actuator that we have checked in the last video as well. Now here I will just find that particular bean, which is product service, right? So this particular product service is created over here, which have one dependency. If I open the dependencies, it will have product repository as dependency, right? That means this particular bean is created. So that bean is present inside our application context, right? This particular bean is injected after dependency injection and it's ready to use. Now, when we destroy our application, the bean will be destroyed and application will be stopped. So that is basically the life cycle of your spring bean, right? So what we discussed, we discussed that these custom actions will be performed after the bean creation and before the destroying the bean. Right. So there are two things basically that we are going to look into. So after the bean creation or before destroying the bean, that means we are targeting these two areas. First, when the bean is created and second, when your bean is being destroyed before destroying bean and after creating bean, right? Two actions after creating this bean and before destroying this bean, right? So let me refactor this particular diagram quickly. So I have added these two stages over here. So custom action after bean creation and custom action before destroying this particular bean, right? So these are two things that we are going to look into now, right? So this is something which we have already seen. So first way, let's say by using interfaces, right? So let's first see the initializing bean. So let's focus on custom action after bean creation, right? Now let's go back over here and what I will do, I will just implement this particular bean with this interface that we just saw initializing bean, right? So what I will do, I will implement that by using initializing bean, right? So now this interface is asking us to implement one method. So if I implement that method, the name of the method is after property set. So let's implement that. So basically we are overriding that particular method. So let me just copy it and put it at the top, just below the constructor. So this particular method we are looking into. Let me just add a quick print statement over here and say after property set. Now let's start the application. Let's see what happens. Now, can you see that? Now, after your product service is created, this particular function is called after property set. That means once your bean is created, you can perform certain init actions inside this particular function, right? Certain init actions in this particular functions 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट कुड बी एनी एक्शन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इनिशलाइजिंग योर डी बी कनेक्शन और इनिशलाइजिंग एनी थिंग एल्स दैट यू वॉन्ट टू इनिशलाइज दैट यू कैन डू ओवर हियर तो आफ्टर यूर बीन इज क्रिएटेड ओवर हियर यू आर डूइंग अ कस्टम एक्शन आफ्टर बीन क्रिएशन तो बाय दिस पॉइंट यूर बीन इज क्रिएटेड प्रोडक्ट सर्विस इज क्रिएटेड तो आई एम जस्ट एडिंग अ प्रिंट स्टेटमेंट ओवर हियर बट लेट्स यू आर डूइंग सम काइंड ऑफ एक्शन ओवर हियर लेट्स राइट सो दैट इज वन पार्ट कस्टम एक्शन आफ्टर बीन क्रिएशन राइट तो दैट इज अगेन वन मोर स्टेप इन साइड यूर स्प्रिंग बीन लाइफ साइकिल नाउ राइट एंड दैट इज हाउ यू कैन कस्टमाइज द नेचर ऑफ बीन लाइफ साइकिल राइट दिस इज वन पार्ट वट इज द सेकेंड पार्ट कस्टम एक्शन बिफोर डिस्ट्रॉइंग द बीन राइट तो हियर वॉट वी विल डू देर इज अनदर इंटरफेस कॉल्ड एज डिस्पोजेबल बीन राइट तो वट आई विल डू आई विल इम्प्लीमेंट दिस एज वेल सो आई डू जस्ट सो आई जस्ट एड अनदर इंटरफेस ओवर हियर लेट से डिस्पोजेबल बीन now it is asking me to implement another method which is destroy now in this case the method name is destroy right let me just cut it and paste it just below this particular function so we have another overridden function now and let me just add a print statement over here and let's just say destroy so now if we run the application let's see what happens now can you see product service created after property set right but this particular destroy is never called now why it was not called because your application is still running are we stopping our application right so the beans will be destroyed whenever we want to stop our application basically but we are not stopping our application so how we can expect the bean to be destroyed and therefore our this particular action will not happen because the bean is not destroyed yet if you see over here the bean is still there if i refresh this open this and find the product service the bean is still there right because your application is running basically right now what i can do over here in order to demonstrate what we can do we can stop our application explicitly so here what i can do here i can stop the context close the context explicitly so that the application will stop and all the beans inside this particular application context will be destroyed now let's restart now can you see this now the product service is created product after property set that means our init is being called and after that your destroy is called okay so this particular statement is coming from this application where where we have this particular logger added now after this log we have closed the context and at this point your beans will be destroyed and just before destroying the bean this custom action will be performed and this particular method destroy method will be called from this particular disposable bean interface so that is how you can perform any action that you want to perform before destroying your bean right in this particular method for example db connection close or flush you can do or you can do garbage collection as well so there are many operation you can perform over there right now both of them we have seen so this this action also we have seen and this action we also have seen right so these two actions over here we have seen by using interface right so initializing bean and disposable bean we have seen right so this particular information that i am giving you the source for this information is the official documentation of spring so you can go ahead to this url i will add this url in the description you can just go ahead and check so customizing the nature of bean and we can customize by using this initializing bean and disposable bean interfaces right now do you see this tip over here it says post construct and pre destroy annotations are generally considered best practice for receiving life cycle callbacks in modern spring applications right that means it is saying that the actions that we performed till now right after creation of bean or before destroying the bean those are old ways of doing stuff right the new way of doing stuff is by using these annotations right so many people won't use this particular way now you may find it if you have been working on few older applications which are there for a long time now so i'm showing you this because this is important to understand this post construct and pre destroy annotations right now let's go back over here now we can just click over here and we will go to using post construct and pre destroy right now let's go back over here in our diagram now this chunk over here is post construct this particular chunk over here this particular step over here is pre destroy now are you able to understand so these two actions that we were looking into is 
basically post construct and pre destroy now let's see how we can use these particular annotations in order to achieve this right now let's go back over here i will remove these implementations so i'll just keep a plain bean i will just remove this override right and i will just remove this or let's remove these functions as well right let's just remove and what we can do let me just go here and comment this out we don't want to close this application just now so what i will do i'll just add a simple method let's say public void let's say init i'm just giving init as a name the name can be anything and this function you can just annotate with post construct and that's it you don't need to give any implementation or anything or override any method nothing you can just have this simple method just annotate it with post construct and you're done right now same uh, logger you can add over here for example like this and we can say so initialization steps after product service is created now let me start the application let's see what happens now can you see this product service is created in its step after product service is created right so our post construct is being called isn't it that means this is behaving same as the interface right so this is a modern way of doing stuff right modern way of calling that particular method by using annotation and again same thing you can do over here as well initialize whatever you want to initialize right and again same thing for destroy so let me add another method let's say public void let's say destroy this time again the name can be anything just giving destroy and i will say pre destroy right i'll just add a logger over here as well destroy steps before product service is destroyed now if i stop and rerun our application again same thing is happening our uh, destroy is not being called again what is the reason now you remember the reason right because the application is not being stopped right the bean is not destroyed now what we will do we'll go over here and we'll do the same thing we'll uncomment this code basically and now if we stop and rerun this application now let's see what happens again same thing is happening so this function pre destroy function is being called after the bean is being destroyed right so here again you can do all the cleanups you want before destroying the beans right so these post construct and pre destroy are the two major customizations that you can do in the nature of spring bean in the life cycle that means now the life cycle of your spring bean is complete right now you have your application start your spring ioc container start brain creation dependency injection post construct the use of your actual bean after that pre destroy bean will be destroyed and application will be stopped right so that is a life cycle of your bean basically right and the same information you will find it over here as well again i will add this particular link inside the description you can go ahead and check this particular document right but i have explained it in a very easy way in order to understand it so that marks the end of it i hope you have fair understanding of bean life cycle and how we can customize the nature of bean inside bean life cycle now if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about bean life cycle and post construct and pre destroy annotation inside spring that's it for this video see you in the next video